Today I'm going to share with you the things that the Lord has been showing me that he wants me to talk about concerning rapture, the imminent uh, occurrence of rapture. And, and I know that last week I promised to uh, talk about the three things that you need to overcome in order to have a successful Christian work. I'll do that next week. But today I want you to know or hear what the Lord has been showing me and I'm going to give you I brought my, uh, brought my uh, little journal because I journal just about every day what the Lord shows, shows me in visions or in dreams. So I'm going to go in uh, chronological order the way that he gave it to me. And uh, on August the 26th this year, uh, the Lord showed me all the little children all over the world. They all had their hands up like, Take me, take me, take me. They are rapture ready. And they were asking the Lord. They were like ready to be picked up by angels at rapture. So God has made the little children ready. And I saw also some uh, uh, a, a little bit uh, mature children. Kids that are like in their teenage years. I also saw them, a section of them. They were also ready. And it was like kind of funny because my, I have a cousin that is wondering if her daughter is going to make rapture. And I saw her among the people that were rapture ready and, and uh, waiting for the Lord to pick them up. That was on uh, August the 26th. Then August the 27th, it was really interesting. You should have seen this sight. All the animals, they were running in one direction, running from the left to the right. Just like when there's going to be an earthquake or some calamity that's about to happen and the animals can sense it, they knew that something was going to happen, that the Lord is getting ready to do something and the animals were all running from the left to the right to get away from what was coming. And I tell you something horrible is going to happen on earth once rapture happens. Once rapture has taken place, there is going to be hell on earth. And uh, if you're not ready, you, it's not a world that you want to be in because you'll be running for your life. You'll be running from calamities coming from the sky, from the earth, and from the people around you. So make sure that you're rapture conscious. I'm telling you all these things because I think that the Lord wants us to, no matter what you're seeing happening in the world, Focus on the Lord and focus on what he's about to do in his church. And another thing that I saw, this was on September the 2nd, a few days ago. And I saw those who are beating the drums of war. They are people on earth, leaders of nations, leaders of uh, countries, and uh, influential businessmen, and uh, heads of uh, corporations that are bent on having World War Three. And you, uh, they were like, uh, you know how you have a matching band and they wore the drums on their neck and they were beating the drums, they were clamoring to go to war. So be careful uh, that you're not supporting those things that will plunge nations into war. Pray that uh, nations do not go to war while the church is still here. That was another thing that the Lord showed me is that um, there, there is going to be a world war because I saw on uh, September the 4th, there were like multiple bombs that went off. It was like the whole nations, so a lot, like uh, the whole of Europe was like uh, in black smoke. I mean, multiple uh, bombs had gone off like missiles and in the distance you can see it looks like somebody has up, uh, actually set off an atomic bomb and it was glowing like the mushroom from an atomic bomb behind the multiple bombs that turned the whole nations uh, into uh, a black dark smoke and it was interesting because right after that at this, uh, it looks like it happened simultaneously somebody had also exploded a chemical mass destructive uh, weapon like a chemical weapon because I saw this uh, lady she looked to me like she's European because she had a, uh, a single pearl uh, or necklace on her neck and she was well dressed and she emerged from the smoke of the chemical weapons that were detonated and she was struggling to breathe as she was coming out 
uh, uh, it's like she escaped the bomb, but she it seems like she's struggling to escape the chemical weapons. So this was on uh, September the uh, the fourth. Then uh, September this, uh, the fifth, I see <laughs> this one is post rapture. It's kind of interesting. This was a man that was a mass wedding. The whole place was white. When you first looked at it, it was people, sea of people dressed up in white. When you look at it initially, it looks beautiful because they were, were all wearing white. But as we came close upon the inspection, which is the spirit of discernment, you will see that it was actually a whole, even though it was mass wedding, it was women marrying other women or getting ready to marry other women. And I, uh, I looked, and out of my mouth went the word abomination. And there were people that were not wearing white, but they came to support those that were wearing white. So one of the people standing by turned to me and said, You say what? You say what? And before I knew it, she started following me, and then it would look like I was with another person. And then the group of people started following her as she was following me and questioning me and go like you say what you say what because out of my mouth the word abomination came out and uh, after a while that they, they followed uh, us we got to a place and then this same lady came up to me and said to me we are lost we took the wrong turn and now we are lost so and I looked at her and I said to her I can tell you exactly where you made the wrong turn why you are lost so, and I said to her, if you guys will take the right turn and go the right way, you will no longer be lost. And so they left, and to my horror, they went down on the steps that was leading down to the pit. So they didn't take the advice that I gave them. They chose instead to go down on steps leading to the pit. This was, I'm talking about this, it was shown to me like uh, after rapture has occurred. And, uh, and I was so sad that uh, I gave them such clear instructions on how to turn and go the right way, but they turned and uh, immediately went on the wrong way. And after that, the scene changed, and the Lord showed me this was most sad. This is the reason why I think the Lord wants me to share these uh, visions now, because this was a mega church, a huge, huge church, the Lord showed me. But when I looked at the church, every one of them, they were sitting in the dark. It was dark from the pulpit to the entire, in the entire room was pitch black. And in the midst of this pitch blackness, I could see two people, one around somewhere close to the front, one close to the back. They were the only two people that were glowing with light. Every other person in that uh, congregation was in dark and they had no light. And the Lord was so sad because I, he said to me, do you see what I'm saying? If I was to come right now in this entire mega church, only two people are ready. Only two people are rapture ready. The rest will be left behind. And it was so sad that you have a big church, a huge church, and yet people are sitting in the church. And what was really interesting was that they were actually comfortable. When you look at them, they were comfortable to sit in the dark. And you couldn't even see the one that was uh, supposed to be preaching light to them. So if you are a minister and you are pursuing all things except the gospel that will bring salvation to God's people, and you're leading your congregation to hell, God will have a bone to pick with you when he comes. And the people that are in your church, when they are left behind, you will have to answer to them what you preached. Because how people can be that comfortable to sit in the dark is beyond me. You know, it is beyond me that people are satisfied to sit in the dark, that in an entire mega church, only two people are wrapped already. Only two people have the light of Christ in them. And then you say that you're a Christian. The devil is laughing all the way to hell because he's seeing 
all these people they play in church and they don't belong to the Lord Jesus they don't have the light of, of Christ also if you are in a denominational church that doesn't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit place on your own ask the Lord to baptize you with the Holy Spirit because the Bible says that if any man has not the Spirit of Christ he is none of his if you don't have the Spirit of Christ in you you might be telling yourself that you're a Christian God sees that he does his life is not in you the, the spirit of his son is not in you and the devil knows it so the only person who is deceived is you so you want to make sure that uh, you you're born again and that uh, you're also also rapture ready you it, Jesus if you follow what the Lord Jesus said he said follow me he didn't say follow my pastor or follow your pastors or follow I mean follow your pastor because Jesus doesn't have any pastor he didn't say to, for you to follow another person. Salvation is personal. You go before God, you give account. The gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that was preached to you, what did you do with it? Did, did you not receive the Holy Ghost because your pastor told you not to? Did you re reject the gift of the Spirit because your pastor said for you not to? You need to go and read what the Lord Jesus said. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall speak with new tongues. So if any pastor is telling you that there is a cessation of tongues, a cessation of the works of the Holy Spirit, they lie to you. They are lying to you. You need to run from them. Because the Lord Jesus said it. It's one of the last things that he said before he left. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. The Lord Jesus said it. Not what your pastor said that you should follow. Jesus said, follow me. You're not going to stand before Jesus and say, oh, I followed my pastor. He's going to ask you, did I tell you to go follow your pastor or follow me? Will your pastor be there on the day of your judgment? No. It would be you and Christ. So make sure that you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit regardless of what anybody tells you. Believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive him and let the light of Christ, please let the light of Christ be in you. Do not be satisfied to sit in the dark. You know, and another thing that I saw the Lord doing was in this season, he's really uh, in deliverance, in the ministry deliverance to the church. He was driving away the different spirits that have been afflicting uh, the church. I saw him drive them away, and I saw him drive away, especially those who are suffering from uh, rheumatoid arthritis. He drove that spirit away, and it was really interesting the way the Lord showed that spirit to me. You see how a robot moved disjointedly? That is how that spirit is. It, it, the joints of the rheumatoid uh, spirit are, are not joined together, they are disjointed, so it moves like a robot, you know. So. This is the season, if you are being afflicted in your bones, you are being afflicted in your joints, ask the Lord to manifest the anointing that destroys that spirit that he, uh, he poured out on uh, September 9th. He poured out that spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and also, you have to have the fire of the Lord Jesus Christ burning in you. Because the time is short. This is not the time for us to be lukewarm. Because he showed me... Uh, 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 the flame, you know, like you have a, a fireplace. The Lord can let you know when the fire is uh, burning low, when it's burning at mean rage, or when it's in full flame and the embers are huge. So th that's what the Lord wants for our uh, altar, the altar of our souls, to be burning with full amber of His fire, the fire of, and the passion for Him, for His word, and for His ways. And you can only do these things by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not a wishful thing. It's not something that you can do by yourself. It is something that God does for you. And finally, what the Lord showed me this morning as I was in prayer, you know, because uh, it, uh, when you come before the Lord, uh, and sometimes it shows me how I'm going, leaving the earth and going to, to heaven and before him, and sometimes it goes welcome. But this morning, as I was praying, because I told you 
that August 26th, I saw when the Holy Spirit took the church. And the Holy Spirit was out of here. And I kind of was panicking at the time because I was like, oh my God, the Holy Spirit is living. It was like just an ordinary day. Nobody, no fanfare, nothing. The Holy Spirit just up and left. And the Lord said to me, but he didn't live alone. He took you guys with him. And so this morning I saw what the Lord meant because he showed me the earth as a globe and we have ascended. The earth is now beneath us. We are out of the earth realm. We are away from the earth. We are above the earth. That's where we are now. And I told you, I think it was uh, in June, the Lord showed me how we were already before the throne and waving palm uh, branches before God. You know, so this is a time for you to really make sure that you are focused. You are truly focused on the Lord and His coming. That when He comes, He can take you with Him. Because if you allow the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the, everything that this world is trying to get your attention with, if you allow them to distract you, you will be left in the earth and you will deal with worse things than what you think you're going through now. So this is the time, place, to make sure that you're Christ-focused, you uh, you're looking forward to His glorious appearing, and if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please ask Him to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And if you're not born again, meaning if you haven't asked the Lord Jesus to be your Lord, it is also the time for you to say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you were buried and on the third day God the Father raised you from the dead. Today I come to you and I ask for the forgiveness of my sins. I repent of them. I ask Lord Jesus that you come into my heart. Be my Lord and wash me with your blood. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit that he will make me a child of God. That I will be born again as you required. And that I will begin to read your word with understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit, and that you will order my steps in your word, and that I will be rapture ready. If you do this, the Lord will hear you, and he will save you. Amen.